Hi everybody, the Rivals Camp Series is presented by Under Armour and Kansas City is in the books and I'm joined by National Recruiting Director Mike Farrell. Mike, you got to hey. see a little bit of uh, Midwestern talent did, today. Did. Um, we had a couple of Husker commits here today. Let's talk about them first. Uh, tight end, sophomore Cameron Jurgens. he really opened your eyes today. You know what, he's, uh, everything I heard here and I've, I've seen him, you know, on film is that he's a linebacker and I know he, you know, Nebraska wants him as a tight end. He can do both. I didn't get to see him work out at linebacker. He's a little stiff for the linebacker position, but he could be a really good one because he's got that great size. As a tight end, what he is to me is a, he's a six foot three flex guy. Uh, he won't stretch the field that much, but he's a powerful kid and he's very difficult to cover because he will, he'll bounce off you, make contact, and gain separation that way. Um, and I also think that he fights the ball right now. He's not a natural pass catcher, uh, but that's something they could work on. Uh, so I, I see him as an outside guy. Um, you know, he could be an inline too because he's very physical, but I see him as an outside guy that's going to have to work on and stretch the field a little bit, but can be a big possession receiver. Box somebody out. You know, Jason Witten, what he does with the Cowboys, I could see this kid doing at Nebraska. And he's still got two more years to, yeah, uh, you know. He's really raw still, so yeah. he's really young. Yep. Um, then we had a, uh, you know, wide receiver Javon McQuitty out of Columbia, Missouri, the four-star Nebraska commit as well. He came out here, he competed in Chicago yesterday, so he's a little bit tired out here today, but he's still really put on a show catching the ball. Yeah, there were a few guys that were you know, you could tell they were winded early, and uh, he's he's not a he's not a burner, but he catches the ball like you said. Um, you know, he high points the ball well. He he catches the ball with his hands. Doesn't drop much. Uh, doesn't gain a ton of separation. But if the ball is on time and, and put in the right place, he'll catch it and he'll come away with it. I think he's a guy that's going to be excellent on timing routes. I think uh, you know, in a tempo offense, this is the type of kid that you're going to say, okay, I need you to break at this particular point. You know, ball's going to come out before you turn your head, and you're going to have to go get it. And I think that's what he'll do. He does need to work a little bit more on his explosion, getting off the line of scrimmage a little faster. He's a good route runner. Um, he's a little heavy-footed when he gets into his breaks, so I think right. you can read that a little bit sometimes. Uh, but overall, I mean, he's, he's, he's a good-sized, angular wide receiver who catches the ball, especially when it's a jump ball. He'll come down with it. And then another kid at the wide receiver spot, uh, Cameron Babb. He's out of St. Louis, and uh, you know he's got a Nebraska offer, and, and they're very high on his list. He had a pretty good day-to-day, -to -day too. You know what? Honestly, he's a little bit more explosive, um, but he was also a little worn out, it looked like. Uh, he gains a little bit more separation. Now, he, he fought the ball a little bit more. He's not as natural a pass catcher uh, as McQuitty is, and, um, you know, I think that's something he's going to need to work on. But he was able to get a little bit more separation, was inconsistent a bit here and there, not as good a route runner as McQuitty, uh, but, again, a more explosive kid off the line of scrimmage and, and in and out of his break. So he'll be a guy that I think can stretch the field a little bit more, um, you know, be that deep threat that you're looking for, and also, uh, you know, be a guy that, that can get two or three steps on a cornerback or, or a safety to get a, a good target for the quarterback. So they're both different guys. They're built similarly, but, you know, I, I, Babs more athletic and, and McQuitty's more of a football player at this point. Absolutely. And one other guy we kind of wanted to touch on, um, you know, a big tight end out of Norfolk, Nebraska. Um, you know, he had a pretty decent day today um what, what were you thinking about him well w you know when you're that big the first thing you think about is a safety outlet for your quarterback you think about an inline tight end a guy that's going to do a lot of blocking a guy that's going to come off the line of scrimmage maybe in play action um that's going to get downfield and you know be that outlet you know that that second or third option for your quarterback and that's going to help you out quite a bit you know if you're if you're not accurate with the ball at times because he's so tall uh, not a separation guy, not a flex tight end. Um, you know, Jurgens was much more athletic and right. a guy that I think, you know, even though I said he needs to work on stretching the field, uh, you know, when you compare the two of them, he's definitely the one who's more ready to do that and more ready to be a, a, an athletic downfield flex guy. Uh, but you need inline tight ends in a pro-style offense. You need guys that can block, and you need guys that can be that outlet for your quarterback. Um, and I think he's going to be one of those guys. Now, Huge, just a huge kid. So we'll see what the future holds with him. But uh, right now, as a tight end, that's what I see is, is, is just a massive inline guy. Yeah, that's Logan Strom. He's also a big basketball player. And finally, Mike, I just wanted to touch on uh, you know Nebraska 
top 15 recruiting class right now going on. What are your thoughts on what Mike Riley and his staff have been doing at Nebraska here lately? Well, they're doing a great job. I mean, the satellite camp certainly helped. His ties in California certainly helped. There's a movement out there. It's always good to have a hashtag, and I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I always liked the hire when Mike Riley was hired. I know a lot of fans weren't happy with that hire. Um, you know, and, and I know the first season was up and down, but I, I like him as a coach. I think he's a high character individual. I think he's a guy who's going to be great in living rooms. Um, Nebraska, as I've mentioned to, to Sean Callahan and some others, is a destination school. You're not going to get a ton of kids that live within a two hour radius. So you're going to have to trust when you send your kids away. And there's nobody you can trust better than Mike Riley, who's, you know, of the highest character when it comes to a head coach. So I think that's what he has going for him. The ties to California, the Keyshawn Johnson factor, you know, the satellite camps that they're working, all of those things come into play. This is probably the most exciting year for Nebraska recruiting since the Marlon Lucky year. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to see. Um, you know, the season's going to be important because you know recruiting's not over until they sign on that dotted line. So if things don't go well during the season or if they get off to a poor start, negative recruiting is going to start pouring in. But Riley's the type of guy that I really do see can hold on to these kids till the end. So I, I love the hire and I love the start they're having. Great. Well, we really appreciate you uh, giving us a few minutes of your time today, Mike. And that's going to do it here from Kansas City. Keep logged on to HuskerOnline.com all week long. We'll have plenty of video coverage and plenty of written stuff on this whole big camp here today. Thanks, Mike. GP. Good to see you, <laughs> GP.